Well, welcome back to the home front, my friends. Uh, well, we got a little bit more snow. Another couple inches of snow had fallen, and uh, there are a couple areas that I need to go through the property and uh, do some snow removal. I'm not going to worry about plowing and all that with this with this little bit of snow, um, but I do need to go take care of my decks, and also I got to get some wood today. I got to gather some wood uh, from our woodshed and move it to our location right next to the uh, sliding door where the stove is. That way, it's much easier to grab a load of wood to uh, stoke up the fire. So, uh, yeah, come on and join me on this uh, cold day. It's about 10 degrees, but beautiful and sunny and blue skies out here. Ah, it's really nice. This is noon. This is what 12 o'clock in the afternoon looks like here in Alaska. That is all the higher the sun gets. Isn't that amazing? It's still behind the trees. Crazy. Hey, there's the mission trailer we shoveled off. Just a skiff of snow up on top of her. You see that now? She's parked out here right now, uh, just so I could have, I could remove the snow from where she was. I'll put that trailer back in just a little bit. And today's vehicle selection is our uh, Polaris General. This is a uh, four-seater General side-by-side -side utility vehicle. Um, I've got to use this guy because as you saw earlier, my Ranger's in the shop. Haven't heard back from them yet, uh, but as soon as I do hear back, I'll let you know what's up with that machine. But for now, we've got to use the General. A little bit smaller utility bed on this one. Uh, but I'll be able to load up enough wood in the back of that bed still to, uh, to, to fill our firebox right next to the house. So that's next. Let's go find the woodshed. Oh, she barely fits. Well, here we are at the woodshed. The general just fits underneath the uh, front awning that I built, or front uh, porch cover, if you want to say it. Uh, and it works out perfect. I have a covered area where I can back up to the opening of the woodshed. And this allows me to pretty easily toss wood into the back of the bed. And here in the woodshed, this is our stock of birch. So there's two full rows of birch, eight feet in length. That one's about four feet high. And the other one up back to behind it's about seven feet high. So there's just over a quarter wood right here, or right about a quarter wood left. And then on this side over here, is what I have left for spruce. So we burn a mixture of spruce and birch up here. I like to use the spruce wood uh, to start the fires. Generally, it's a, it's a softer wood, and it does catch fire or start fire much easier. And then the uh, birch I'll put on top of the spruce uh, for a longer, hotter burn. It is a hardwood up here. And uh, it does definitely burn quite a bit longer, so long as it's seasoned properly. Um, I was burning some stuff last year that was still fairly green, and it just did not want to burn. So we're working on seasoning our wood much better uh, this time around. And come uh, early summer, late spring, early summer, I'll be getting into more wood harvesting uh, for the upcoming winter. Um, it seems like all we do every summer is prepare for winter. Uh, cause it, it is, it's a, it's something you gotta prepare for. There's a lot going on here. It gets cold and long dark nights, so you might as well prepare ahead of time. Well, there you go. General is full of wood. We got spruce on one side and then the birch stacked on the other side. And now we'll head over towards the, uh, storage box by the sliding door inside the house. Wow, what a beautiful day. And that was just a short trip to the house. And you see the little box right here on the patio? That is my wood storage box. We're gonna go open up and throw some wood into it. Oh, I've also got a bucket with a ha an ax in there for uh, splitting kindling. As you can see, it's pretty empty. So, uh, time to load her up. There it is. Well, there's a mostly full wood box. Now that's gonna last for a couple of days, probably four, three or four days, just depends on how cold it is. 
if it's warm, you know, we were in the uh, mid 20s last week and at times and uh, we're using a whole bunch of wood. But when it gets colder, we definitely use a lot more wood just to keep that house warm. Oh, our view down here never gets old. <laughs> just amazing, beautiful backyard. Right here is our downstairs patio underneath our deck, covered deck. And last night I shoveled the snow off the covered deck, but I didn't make it down here to clean up what falls. And uh, I need to take care of that and uh, clean it up down here. So that is next on my list. Well, I think that went pretty well. That's a nice, nice even line right there. Snow berm piling up from all the snow above. And a little bit of snow here on the patio. One thing I love about the snow here is it's so cold. So the moisture content is very low. So the snow is dry and lightweight. It makes it much easier to shovel, much more, well, I'm not gonna say pleasurable, but just much less work. Um, so it's not too bad, I don't mind. Don't mind shoveling snow, especially when it's light like this. Down in the lower 48, when we were down there, sometimes it would snow at 34 degrees, and that snow's just heavy and no fun to mess with. It's a whole different animal. Up here we may get a lot more, but it sure is a lot lighter. Now you can see some snow dust here on the concrete, and in a day or so, that stuff will just disappear. It kind of just evaporates because our climate is fairly dry as well. So, they're low humidity. So it just kind of evaporates off the ground and then you get nice clear concrete with no snow and no ice. It's kind of amazing. The tricks of living in Alaska. We sure do love it. Not sure if you can see through the trees or not, but the mountains are kind of showing off a little bit. Yeah, it's really hard to see through the trees, as I can tell. But they're there. Oh, it's amazing. We see them every day. Love it. and out the door by 9 a.m. is almost unheard of. But today I'm doing it for a worthy cause. I am actually volunteering at this year's Arctic Winter Games. The Matsu Valley has been named host for these Arctic Games and they are calling for around 2,000 volunteers to help pull off these games. The games are for youth in the Arctic Circle. You're gonna see youth competing from Canada, of course, Alaska, Norway, Sweden. I'm not sure if there's a delegation from Russia this year or not, but basically think about the countries that are in the Arctic Circle, and that is who's gonna be competing. And I've signed up to help, to volunteer, and today is my first day of duties. It's orientation. So we're going to head into the movie theater and see what this is all about. I think this will be really exciting to watch later on in March. And uh, I'll definitely bring as much to you as I can. All right, I need to get inside. I don't want to be late.
you're home. Today was a big day. Um, doctor's appointments and uh, grocery shopping. I am doing a thing with several of my girlfriends. We are doing a soup exchange dinner tomorrow night. And so I need to produce about 34 cups of soup and I've chosen split pea and ham. So we went to the grocery store today and did a little grocery shopping and I videoed some prices while we were there. This was our take home of what we actually bought. I did record a whole bunch of different regular foods uh, that you might normally get at the grocery store. And just to show prices for a price comparison, but here is our haul. And uh, any guesses to how much we spent? Can't ask Gary, because he was there with me. Were you surprised by Safeway compared to Fred Meyer? I think the Safeway prices seem to be a little more reasonable, but still, we're paying for Alaska. There is a slight yeah, Alaska there's factor. There's a little Alaska thing going on. So looking at our, we bought a total of 33 items and we did save $10.32 by using our club rewards. Cars is just like Safeway uh, and Albertsons. They're all under the same company. So any guesses as to how much we spent on today's grocery haul? put your guess below and uh, we'll fill you on the total price here in a little bit in the video. So Mr. Quimby, do you want to explain what you've got going on? I do. First, I want to go over there and sit down. Okay, let's go do that. Maybe grab a beer. Well, oh, I'm, I'm one step ahead of you. I always seem to be at least maybe one, two <laughs> steps ahead of you. I don't know, but for some reason, that's a great idea. I think I will. All right, let's go sit mm. on the couch. All right, Mr. Quimby, what's going on? Oh, I, I've got a little bit of an injury. Just a little one? A little one. So on Saturday, I was moving some snow machines out of a trailer. And... You know, when you go snow machining, snow obviously builds up on these machines and you park them inside a trailer and they cool down and snow falls off of it and then refreezes inside the trailer and creates a little bit of a mess. And uh, I was walking on some of that ice in the trailer and my foot slipped. And it, I didn't slip and fall and, and you know, go down or anything like that. I just slipped and was able to catch myself. And as I was going to catch myself, my knee made this horrendously loud popping noise. Shortly followed by a, a lot of pain. And uh, I, I've, I'm familiar with that noise and the pain from a past injury. Uh, Ten years ago, almost to the day, within two weeks, I completely ruptured my ACL uh, in a skiing accident and had to go through the full ACL replacement using a piece of my hamstring from the other leg. Uh, and then the following six months of um, therapy, physical therapy and rehab. Um, and my knee was great. After surgery, after all the rehab and physical therapy, therapy I was 100%. Uh, I was doing single legged squats with unbalanced weights on the hands and this and that, and just, I was good to go. Well, 10 years later, here we are again. Um, this happened on Saturday. On Monday, I went to my primary care physician. I uh, got the referral to a uh, orthopedic surgeon, as well as a referral for an MRI. It was amazing. We were able to go down to Imaging Associates uh, and get a walk-in MRI same day. So by 11.30 that uh, same afternoon, the MRI was complete and we were walking out. Uh, was that evening or the next evening? I think it was that night, Monday night. It was during our live. It was Monday night. I got a call from my uh, our doctor's assistant, and she gave me the information that uh, I have a partially torn ACL. 
Uh, I don't know the full depth of the tear. If it's a little teeny one or a big deep tear, I don't know for sure. Um, I have actually a scheduled appointment with an orthopedic surgeon on Tuesday coming up. And at that point, we'll find out more information. One week. <laughs> yeah, right. From injury, well, one week and a couple of days. From, from date of injury to appointment with orthopedic surgeon, uh, just over a week. So, I mean, that, that's, you know, people were worried about our medical services available to us up here. And, and so far, we've had a couple of instances where we've had to use a medical system up here, and we've been very happy with it. Um, the professionalism, the quality is all there. Um, and, and almost anything, any services are here in the Valley. And if there isn't something here in the Valley, it's a quick trip down to Anchorage. So, um, but for the most part, everything's been taken care of here in the Valley for us. With talking to some of our friends and family, they're like, oh my gosh, that is so quick. Mm -hmm. But you've got to think about it too. Where we live here in the Valley, we only have 100,000 people using the same medical and there is quite a bit of medical here there is a and lot. like you were just saying if we don't have it here in the valley it's just an hour yeah. drive into anchorage yep. so and we have some really great surgeons yeah a great surgery center a great hospital um the orthopedic uh, surgery center i'm going to is brand new at the the clinic's been established for quite some time but they just built a new state-of-the-art uh, facility uh it's beautiful there's a physical therapy uh, suite attached to it so and you got to get to know them and, this spring right. i use the same same place for my carpal tunnel surgery that i had uh, over springtime yeah which the spring when you went in from referral to surgery was two weeks two weeks which i was amazed <laughs> I, it was, actually it happened a little quicker than i was expecting i was expecting to be at, at least a month or a month and a half out but no it was two weeks on that one yep so i don't know when surgery will be for the knee um, we are going to uh, talk with the uh, orthopedic surgeon on Tuesday and uh, go from there. But now uh, I've got to take this brace off. I've had the brace on all day. So this was the brace that I was uh, fitted to 10 years ago after I had my ACL injury at that point. Uh, and I was actually wearing this when my injury occurred a couple of days ago. And I believe it has helped me um, it doesn't allow my leg, my knee to twist a whole bunch, and it doesn't allow me to hyperextend. So in that slip accident, I think the brace helped me from hyperextending and tearing more. And I also think it helped me from collapsing the medial or lateral ligaments uh, in the knee too. So this may have been a savings for me. We'll see. But it's got to come off now. I've had it on all day. And... Uh, in between doctor's appointments and yeah grocery shopping and just walking around town you know it's it's there's snow and ice on the ground so i want to make sure i have some protection oh, it's already feeling better the brace really is supportive um it doesn't look like much but it really does offer quite a bit of support for me and uh not necessarily confidence in the knee but just offers support so well and your knee has gone down it was blown up oh, like my, a balloon yeah, the, the swelling has gone down quite a bit i'm wearing actually actually wearing some long underwear as well it's it is like 10 below um but it helps with the chafing of the with the brace so i don't have to wear just a little sock so anyway uh yeah swelling's gone down and the with the swelling going down the pain has subsided a bit um, I have, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more motion back and that's not to say the injury is healing because it's not, uh, ligaments don't heal very well on their own. Um, they have to be surgically repaired. Um, so I do still have, I'm going to call it joint fatigue, uh, where I can't fully trust the joint. Uh, it's not hundred percent stable going up and down stairs. I have to be very careful uh, walking on uneven surfaces is uh, always, uh, more of a, I got to take care of more, more caution with that. So around the house, I don't wear the brace too much, but out and about, I would definitely will. All right, so that is what we've been up to for uh, just the past, past few days. It hasn't even been a week nope. since injury. It's been nope. five days. So we obviously he's had a lot of couch time. Well, and, and with the news of a, a tear and not a full rupture, that really has 
I guess, lightened our spirits a bit. Um, before we were really kind of, you know, that happened on Saturday. So we, I went all day Saturday and all day Sunday and, and into Monday before knowing that, well, most of Monday, before knowing it was a terror. So we, we didn't know how bad this was. And knowing what we went through 10 years ago, it's tough up here. Um, when you when you don't have a teamwork to, to make everything work up here. Well, and it's not quite the optimal season. I know this, not... this cuts. Um, so obviously right now, Gary's out of work yep. um, until we know more. Um, and the doctor basically releases him from work. Uh, this also cuts in, unfortunately, to our play playtime. Well, my playtime, you can still go out and have fun. So, um, and I am praying for no snow, uh, even though we need it. Um, I'm just, I will have to say we have amazing neighbors. A lot of them have said. So you're pr praying for no snow because you don't want to have to plow the driveway. <laughs> and a lot of neighbors have said they heard that and they're like, oh, don't worry. We will come over and you plow covered. you out. We got you covered. So, so not worry yeah. about that. But, you know, at this point, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with surgery and how much i'm going to be laid up after that but it's not going to be a six month recovery hopefully shouldn't be um i'm looking for a much shorter recovery period than that um and if surgery isn't for another couple of weeks i can manage on my own for a little while um the knee moves i can walk i can get around i just need my need to get my ranger back out of the shop so i can actually pop some snow myself <laughs> all right well i have a feeling Gary is going to be resting and relaxing somewhat and maybe sitting and supervising me doing the suit. I, I think that's probably more of the situation where I'll be supervising you because supervising. Um, oh, shoot. Maybe not supervising, but I will be available for your questions and needs. He'll be supervising. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll super by super. super. I got you. We're making soup. <laughs> I normally am not the one with the with the dad joke. That's so. a bad dad joke. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I got to put some groceries away and yeah, my wife's uh, making soup today. Get prepping. I'll be supervising. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, take care. Let's do this. Again, what what we're doing I was invited to a soup exchange dinner tomorrow night and a group of us we're all friends seven ladies will be coming and we all have made seven different types of soups and we are exchanging four cups of each soup with each lady 
So basically, I needed to make 24 cups of soup or equivalent to um, exchange with everyone. So that is how we ended up with the big stock pot here. And I am using a recipe that my mother gave me years ago. And it's her famous split pea soup. How famous is it? Well, it's famous for my mom. Okay. I will say it is one thing whenever I go home, I always ask my mom to make. And so it's near and dear to my heart. And I will be sharing the recipe with all of my lady friends when I gift them their four cups of soup. Right. So that is what a soup exchange is. And I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be just an evening of sitting around with our girlfriends and um, with my girlfriends. Gary will stay home. Thank God. <laughs> and just have an evening out together. So it's one of many things we do in the winter time to just encompass our friends, get out of the house and um, visit. Because usually in the summer, we rarely see anyone because everyone is so busy, go, go, go play, play, play. Uh, so winter is really the socialization season. I agree with that. Yep. So how's your uh, leg today, tonight? Well, you can feel it, can't you? I can feel it tonight. I mean, we've been up all day and uh, no ice, no, no elevation. Should I just go throw you in a snowbank? No, nope, I'll take a hot tub though. <laughs> Let's go check the temperature real quick. <laughs> Before she commits to the hot tub, she wants to know the temperature. <laughs> right? It's at least, it's around eight below, I think. It is negative 6.2. Oh, okay. Let's see what our minimum was. Uh, that's our maximum. So we only got to our high today was 0 0.3. And our minimum, our coldest, Negative 19.1. Is that close enough to 20 below? I would count that as negative 20. Sure. 20 below. I also think that is our coldest we have seen uh, at our weather station this, year. this winter oh, yeah. season. Actually, I think for 20, oh, well, yes, 2024. Right. Forgot we're in the new year. As you can tell, my supervisor, supervisor, supervisor. has kind of taken over. It's kind of what happens. Oh, well, look at that. Wow, that we have shrunk up on there. Oh, that's a beautiful looking shank. The meat was fully encompassed all the way around here. I mean, you couldn't see any bone. The meat was all the way up to the tip over here, and it shrank down that much. That much juice is in that soup. Oh. It's gonna be so good. Uh, do you want a plate or something? So you... the cutboard. Okay. And only a few drips. Sophie's right there. She'll get it. See, she's on it. Get it, Sophie. Where's the drip? Right there. <laughs> she's our little <laughs> vacuum cleaner. Now these other hawks in here, they were uh, some raw. So I'm gonna let them go a little bit longer. But they're shrinking down pretty good too. Oh yeah. So these, these were raw ham hocks, and uh, I want them to go a little bit longer. They're not quite cooked yet. So we'll keep them in, keep them in there. And now I'm gonna work on getting this guy shredded. Oh, oh look at that meat. <laughs> look at that. So this is also, if, if you're familiar with like pork osobuca. This is what you get. You get a, like a, a pork shank with all that sauce and drippings around it. So that's the, the meat we're using. Oh, don't let the fall. From a pork shank. Oh, man, it comes right out. Oh, that reminds me, is Spirit still in the shop? Oh yeah, she's chilling on beef, beef bone. <laughs> we had a ribeye steak tonight for dinner. Bone steaks, both of us. Delicious. 
And Spirit got the leftovers. All right, so we're gonna chop that up and add it to our soup stock. Oh, that's for you. <laughs> I mean, we're not sample as you go, right? That is really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is gonna taste really, really nice in the soup. And the, the combination of the uh, regular smoked ham and the pork shank, you can tell the difference in the meat, but it's gonna, the taste, the flavor is gonna be really amazing with these two meats in there. And then the uh, the pork sh the pork ham hocks that are in there now are giving it more of the, the fatty and a little bit more uh, bone marrow flavor. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that meat yet or not. I gotta take a look at the meat and see how it's come out so far, um, but. We're getting almost there. I want to pull them out here in just a minute. Fishing for, fishing for a ham hock. Oops, I'm pulling some meat off root. Oh. oh, that thing's falling apart. But you see how that, that this is the skin. That's the skin of the, of the, the pig leg and uh, I don't want that stuff. That's going to be chewy and, and can have a weird texture to, to the meat. So I don't necessarily want that in the meat. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take it to the cutting board and see what I can do. See if there's anything salvageable on these guys. There's another one. Oh, yep. First, oh, the whole thing. Yep, the whole thing's there. Skin layer on there that's gonna make it tough to do anything with. Maybe. It does come off. Let me see. It's not. This has been. This is raw. Uh, so I want to make sure. If if I put it in there, if I want to use it, I want to make sure it's to the proper temperature. Uh, not sure. You know, boiled meat. Yeah, it is, it is warm enough. Hot enough. 190. The boiled meat always has that weird rubbery texture to it. So I guess the only way to know is to uh, take a piece off. Cut it up a little bit. I should be using my other, other fork. This fork is not good. I think the shank and the other ham has a lot more flavor than this does. To just use it for bone flavor and yeah, yeah, toss the bone, that. So the bone marrow in here, you can see the bone marrow has really softened and disintegrated a lot, and that flavor has gone into the uh, into the soup itself. That bone marrow has softened up and, and, and made its way into the juices. But this meat just has a not much flavor to it, actually. Just playing with it. You know? Definitely not as soft. A little more chewy. And you're right, the flavor is not. No, I mean, and we have plenty of meat here. Yeah. With the other the other portions. So I think we're gonna get rid of this stuff and uh, put that yummy stuff in a stock pot. And we're almost done. Woo. That's a good amount of ham in there, it's a couple pounds. Ah, uh, coming in for the assist? Yep. Ah, uh, you're too late. No, because now I got the stir. Now you got to stir, yep. So, I've got this amazing, really large aluminum stock pot here, and I've used it quite a few times. The first couple of times I had a hard time with it. Um, no matter what temperature I had the range at, stuff would just stick into the bottom and um, continue to fight to scrape stuff off. But if you look closely down here, I've got a cast iron skillet, a 10 inch cast iron skillet. 
down there, and the skillet catches the flame and distributes the heat a bit more evenly, so there's not so much intense heat on the bottom of the stock pot, um, and it gives it a much more even, uh, controllable heat. Although it does hold heat for quite a bit longer, so when I turn this up and I turn it down, it takes quite a bit more time to react to that. Um, but having that pot, the cast iron pan down there is saving the bottom of this. It's nothing's burning down there. And we're able to get the nice, good, low simmer for a long period of time uh, that this soup needs. So That's a good little trick I have just kind of figured out a little bit ago. I like it. Well, from the supervisor, I thank you guys for joining, this, joining us this evening. We had a great time uh, making this split pea soup. Um, I'm sure it's going to be delicious. We'll have to let you know for sure in a couple of days. Yep. Uh, maybe I will drop the recipe down oh, below. I, I bet they would love that. In the description yeah. of this video. And if you guys have any wintertime warm-up favorite recipes, you know, comfort share them food. with us too. The comfort food, the soups, the... The baking, whatever you want, whatever, whatever you guys do in the wintertime to keep you warm and toasty, let us know. We'd love to love to try them out. Yep, I have a feeling this is going to simmer for a little bit longer, yep. and it is getting late. And uh, I think we're going to close out this video here. It's been it's been a week. Uh, we could really use thoughts and prayers for Gary and his upcoming healing. Um, so far, I, mean, I can't say I'm healing now, but I am. The trauma from the injury has has reduced, um, and the, the, as in the swelling and the pain, uh, I'm able to get around a little bit more. But today's been a test, and I I'm failing now. <laughs> yes. I need to go put my leg up, get some ice on me, maybe a beverage. And then we will update everybody uh, after we see the orthopedic surgeon yep. on uh, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So. If you like this content, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or just any general comments, you can leave them down below. And please subscribe to this Absolutely. channel. Please do. We are starting over, so there's nothing yeah. harder than starting a new to YouTube channel. Yeah. So if you like this content, please give us that big subscribe. And uh, we will see you next week. Take care, guys. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hop on over to our second channel, Living Free Alaska, because later this spring, we will no longer be posting our Alaska Life content here on RVing to Alaska. A link to our new channel is in the video description below, or click on the logo on your screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.